Hey everybody, let's welcome the Creative Futures Collective to the stage. Great to have you all here. Um, so we have Jai Al Atas, the CEO and founder of Creative Futures Collective. We <laughs> we have Mez, a musician and mentor for the program, and Sheree Rucker, a creative strategist at Live Nation Entertainment and a Creative Futures alumni. Um, so maybe just to start, Jai, could you just tell us what Creative Futures Collective is and how you started it and why? Yeah, absolutely. So, how's everybody doing? Sorry. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, the business, the business pitch on Creative Futures is that we are an opportunity ecosystem for creative talent that has traditionally been overlooked, ignored, or forgotten. Um, but in layman's terms, we kind of help create pathways into the creative industries for people that come from underrepresented backgrounds. So people that you know, haven't traditionally had access or opportunity, that's what we do. And we do that through you know, mentorship programs, workforce development programs, helping people get jobs, helping people work on events like this and, and getting to speak on stage as well. Amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, can you talk a little bit about how many folks have come through your door um, and like, what type of work? I mean, how, how, like, specifically, how do you assist them? Yeah, so to give some context, so we started, myself and Marky Bryant, my co-founder, um, we started this in 2019. We started with 10 fellows, as we call them, 10 alumni. Um, at the time, half of them were formerly incarcerated women, half were um, homeless youth, working for two different organizations that we worked with here in LA. Um, and basically, we wanted to get them internships in the creative industry, so companies like music companies, film companies, TV companies, etc., because none of them were in college, they weren't eligible to get internships um, at these companies. Apparently, you know, in corporate America, you need to um, be in college to get in internships. We thought that was ridiculous, so we tried to find like a, a backdoor in. So we started, we started there, um, and in that first cohort, we were able to get people um, internships at the LA Lakers, at Spotify, at the World Surf League. Some of those people got hired full time, um, and that was that was how it started. So just trying to get people like these internships. Now, at the end of this year, we're going to have 1,300 people that have gone through one of our programs. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, globally, as well. Um, and we've got people now working full-time at like Nike, Live Nation, WME, um, Disney, all, all, all over the place. So yeah, just trying to you know, knock down doors, kick down doors, and, and get, people, get people shots. We've got actually three of our alumni working um, on this event today as, kind of, as an extension to the social media team here. So cool. Sheree, maybe you could talk a little bit about your journey in the music industry. How did you end up getting connected to um, Creative Futures Collective, and like, how did your mentorship work? Sure. So I actually came across Creative Futures posting on Indeed, and it sounded too good to be true. Um, but I went ahead and applied, and I was like, I hope this isn't a scam, um, and it wasn't. <laughs> um, and I got connected with Jai, and it was great. I did a virtual mentorship, and I also did um, a Soho house mentorship with them. And through them, I got to learn the ins and outs of the industry with my mentors, which was great. I wouldn't have been able to ask those kind of, or get answers to the, my specific questions in any other way. Um, so it was really helpful, like learning from them how I should shift my creative focus and you know what I should do to be at the level I need to be. Um, and then later, Jai introduced me to my future boss at Live Nation, and uh, the rest is history. So it sounds like the relationship goes on and on. Like it's not a like, okay, you're with us for X amount of time. See you later. Good luck out there. It's an ongoing. Yeah, we say, we say it's for life. Like once you once you get in here, it's forever. And like you know, we're we're still a small young company. Like, so as we grow, like the alumni get to grow with us. So like you know, a new. I mean, Bloomberg is a perfect example. We're, we're sitting up here right now. Like that opportunity comes to us, and we extend it to everyone else. So as as it grows, they get opportunities. One thing that we also do is like, we've got you know. 600 plus mentors that work everywhere from you know Netflix, NBC Universal, Vice, wherever, Bloomberg, um, and our alumni get access to that database. So, say if someone went through the program three years ago, they want to connect with someone at Spotify, we can make that introduction for them. So, we call it like an alumni network for people that don't have alumni networks. Mm. 
Love that. Mez, how did you get involved in the program? And as a mentor, <laughs> I'm curious like what common questions or what kind of common interests you see from the people who come to you and how do you help them? Absolutely. Well, uh, you know, I, I became involved on accident, which is really funny. Um, I'm on a, on, well, I'm, I'm, I was at Soho Warehouse and Jai was there as well. And it was the first day that, uh, that Creative Futures um, was having an event for, for their mentees and mentors. And so Jai thought I was a mentee, actually, <laughs> you know, which was really funny. Like <laughs> when I first walked in, we had a conversation. He's like, well, where, where are you supposed to be, man? Do you know? I'm like, no, I, you know, I don't. But someone told me I should probably be here. I'd be perfect fit for, for what you're doing. But he didn't realize it was as a mentor, you know, <laughs> instead of a mentee. But either way, you know, we had a short conversation. He asked me, like, well, what do you do for work? And I told him I was an artist, a, a film director, um, you know, a part owner of a film production company. I explained to him, like, uh, you know, what I had going on. He said, yeah, you should well, sit well, with us. Let, let, let me tell you what you told me. So <laughs> I thought he was a mentee. And then I said, yeah, what are you working on? And he's like, well, yeah, I'm an artist. Like, you know that album, Compton, by Dr. Dre? Well, I co-wrote half of that album and a producer on it. It's like, cool. He's like, you know J. Cole? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, yeah, he's like my friend. I've directed a few music videos for him. I'm like, cool, yeah, you should, you should definitely be involved as a mentor. So yeah. I thought he had the credentials, put it that way. Yeah, and so that's, that's kind of what ended up happening. Um, that, that's how it began for me. But, you know, I just thought it was so, uh, it was in such perfect alignment with, with who I am and, and the way I like to live my life. And just so many people have been mentors to me. You know, just the way he just brought up Cole, like Cole and Eve have, I've always been able to call them if I needed help or, you know what I mean, needed perspective on anything. Even just today, you know, um, I was on a song for the Creed soundtrack, the, the, uh, the newest Creed movie, the Creed 3 movie soundtrack. And it's up for consideration to be nominated for a Grammy as of today. You know what I mean? And so, you know. Even, even stuff like that, like, I think that there's no way I could be doing what I'm doing without people pulling me to the side here and there. Yo, maybe you should be here at this thing or, you know, just making an, an extra little push for me to, you know what I mean? Like one extra little phone call or text and then I'm the type of person to take advantage of it and make it what it's supposed to be, you know? And so there's other people like that out there, like, like that out there and, and people that I feel like I know I could do the same thing for, or try my best to, you know, um, me and my, me and Valder, you know, my boy, who's my partner in my company, Airs Entertainment, we just did a back to school event in North Carolina where I'm from, you know, connecting like some of the kids that are underprivileged, like you said, people who don't have the opportunity as much, you know what I mean, to, to people that do and people that have been where they're trying to go. So I just, I think it's more important than anything, you know, when you're in this, in this business, it's like to be a connector, you know, we have to be like a conductor on the circuit board, you know what I mean? You can't just, you can't not give it back. We all owe it to the game, to me. Totally, you know? totally. Yeah. I mean, I think it's worthwhile to call out like why this work is so important. You did an amazing job summing that up, but I'm curious also, Jai, like why did this become something, and especially with homeless youth, like I'm yeah. curious how that became such a focus. Um, God, this whole thing has been an accident for us, a happy accident. Um, this, was, this was never the intention. I mean, just a little bit of my backstory. A lot of it has to do with my backstory and why we do this and, and kind of, but yeah, the, the shortest way to tell it. So, so I'm born and raised in Australia. Um, I started a record label when I was 16 years old. I sold it to EMI when I was 24. Um, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't able to start a label because I had any money for my family. My dad is an Indonesian immigrant. He came to Australia on a boat. He was 19, didn't go past like eighth grade in school. Cleaner his whole life, like never over 30 grand a year. My mom, who's a well-educated white Australian woman, works um, with indigenous rights in Australia. Um, so yeah, didn't grow up with any connections in any industries, didn't grow up with any money, um, and was able to start and sell a label. I didn't go to university, I didn't go to college. So it's kind of like a chip in my shoulder about you know, creating, opening doors for people, because I never had anyone really do that for me. Um, but the other thing as well is like, I think so many companies, and I'm seeing some questions here, talk about like, the importance of like, diversity and, and why this is important work. And, a big part of why we do it isn't because we think it's like giving back or it's the right thing to do. We know, like, and we have a lot of our alumni here are incredibly talented people that, for whatever reason, have been overlooked for most of their lives. And we're like, you deserve to be in the room. And that's, that's, that's what we're doing, and that's why we do it. And then you also just look at, like, where demographically this country is going. Right now, you know, black and brown people are considered a minority. In 10 years' time, they become the majority. So if you think of, you know, any companies in this room, if you think about, 
the majority of people are going to be people of color. So that's like TV shows, movies, products. Like if you don't have those people working in your company, your company is going to get left behind. So it's not even just doing it because of you know whatever trends are happening. Like this is this is where everything's headed. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. We're unfortunately at time, but thank you guys so much for joining us up here, and. <laughs> We're actually going to have a performance yes. from an artist who came up through the Creative Futures Collective, Amelene. So if you wouldn't mind clapping for her as well. As we Hi, everyone. How are we doing? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you guys for that really wonderful panel. I. I'm so excited to show you guys uh, some of my music, but before I do, I would really like to share with you guys a little bit about how Creative Futures Collective has been so amazing for me and my creative journey. Um, so I found out about Creative Futures Collective on Instagram ads, so that was a brilliant idea, whoever came up with that, because your demographic is definitely on Instagram looking at, you know, wanting to be a part of something that is going to help them succeed in their creative career. So um, yeah, and, and shout out to Jai for creating this whole organization. <laughs> Truly amazing, remarkable, changing lives. Um, so my purpose of being a part of this, I, I came in with the intention of wanting to understand the music business more in a more profound way, in a more deep way, because I feel like it's typically something that artists don't look at very much. Um, and it's such an important part of anyone's career. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I got paired up with a uh, music attorney and we've been able to look at so many things together in terms of contracts, what the specifics are when you're dealing with a, a record deal, when you're dealing with a publishing deal, things like that. And it's been amazing. So um, without further ado, I'd like to show you guys a song that means so much to me. I wrote it about a month ago. Um, shout out to my mom who helped me write the Spanish part. She was also a musician and kind of has always inspired me in my musical journey. Um, and shout out to my producer who helped me uh, create this song. It's an Ama Piano song. I'm a multi-genre artist, so this is one of my songs that is of very many. Um, so yeah, let me show you guys. Do you know who you are? You ain't got no competition, you are a superhero. Can nobody screw ya? Focus on elevation. Going to another level, it's time that you wake up. And so it's la verdad, don't you know what you are made of? If you look in the mirror, that right there is your savior. God made you a creator. It's not about the paper, that's what makes you a hater. Solutions in the prayer, go hard like super set. Eeny, meeny, money, more. I got what you want, you know. I'm the goddess singing show. You should let me touch your soul. When we always stay on top, you know I just want to ride. And I'll be something I'm not. Now you know where to fight. Breathe in, breathe in, see it, see it. Let it flow through ya. La sabrosura. Breathe in, breathe in, see it, see it. Let it flow through ya. La sabrosura. Eres fuerte, lo puedes hacer. Si tú crees, lo puedes tener. De la fuente puedes obtener toda la luz, todo el poder. Tu guarda de frente, inteligente, suficiente, diferente. Una gente del presente, todo se crea desde tu mente. La vida es un carnaval para reír, para usar, para crear lo que tú quieres, visualizar lo que tú eres. La vida es un carnaval para reír. Para usar, para crear lo que tú quieres, visualizar lo que tú eres. Ni, 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 I got what you want, you know. I'm the goddess in control. You should let me touch your soul. When we always say on top, you know I just want to ride. And I'll be something I'm not. 
Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. Um, just a little plug in. You guys can follow me on the socials. I also did just release my first single about 12 days ago. It's a reggaeton song. So if you guys like reggaeton music, you can go ahead and check it out. Um, next up, I would like to welcome a very brilliant screenwriter and filmmaker who is also in the Creative Futures Collective. So let's all welcome to the stage, Kiera Williams. Alrighty, good morning everyone. Uh, um, so hello, my name is Kiera Williams and I am a screenwriter and director from New York City. About two years ago, I came across a Creative Futures ad on Instagram, applied, and got in. Fast forward to today, I am now an alumnus of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Gold Program. I've worked on four films in the past year alone, and now I am making my directorial debut with the film that I pitched at the Mentorship Showcase. <laughs> Thank you. So the story came about from a game of Would You Rather, in which I was asked, would I rather serve a lifetime sentence for a crime that I didn't commit or be free for a crime I did? Long story short, my answer was lifetime sentence because Jesus, if you know, you know. <laughs> but that really got me thinking about injustice, mass incarceration, and really what it means to show mercy to people who've shown you none. Um, and from that, Glass was born, a short film, a zero budget film, and by zero budget I mean people donated hundreds of hours of their time because they believed in the story. And I share this because Creative Features has done the same. Giant Markey started uh, the program with nothing but a belief in the people and the stories that have been overlooked for generations. Um, so thank you so much Creative Futures. Um, <laughs> now you probably are all wondering, so what's the film about? My short story, uh, my short film Glass is a coming of age story about a young woman whose life is shattered when her best friend overdoses. She finds herself ostracized when everything she put her faith in, her friends, her community, and even her faith desert her. And so without further ado, here is the trailer for my latest short film. Thank you. 2,000 milligrams of Adderall were found in Janine's system. Is she okay? Are you? Fellow was just violent the whole time. Everyone is guilty of something. I'm just tired of it. Watch it. This one will kill herself, though. That's enough. No one is showing me mercy right now. Do it. The quality of mercy is not strained. What are you guilty of? 